Waterfall Cave. Beware of blood-sucking monsters. No kids allowed. Well, that doesn't apply anymore, so... Let's chop down the sign. There. Nice. <laughs> now we need a sign to warn people not to fall and stab and impale themselves on that spike. Let's see if I can... No, I can't. Well, anyway, <laughs> I'll leave that be. Hey, guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to more Skyward Sword. Last episode, we healed Batro of his demonism and turned him into a human by giving him compito. Basically, that's that's basically what we did. We satisfied his sweet tooth, and that made him human. And he is now, at, right at this moment, in the bazaar, enjoying the benefits of being human, and that is no one being scared of him. So that's really nice. He lived happily ever, ever after. And also, we opened the way to the final dungeon, which was actually right under our noses from the start. So that's pretty neat. We're we're finish that, finishing things off right where we started. So, in this episode, we're going to go ahead and head on in the last dungeon. In probably the coolest means of entering a dungeon ever in Zelda. I can't think of anything that tops this. Also, I can't think of why... Oh, I know why. Okay, you can skip this and just go straight to that one, but I know why that's there. It's because wherever you are on Skyloft, these... Okay, well, this is going to play. I accidentally walked into it. But anyway, wherever you are, those targets always follow you. So the reason why that second to last target was there is because when you're on the that platform that we just ran off of, uh, you can't reach the one. So you have to get to that one in order to, yeah, in order to get back onto Skyloft. So yeah, that's why it's there. Now that aside... I'll let you just drink in the atmosphere of this area. It's very beautiful, and it it's, has a setting that we haven't seen ever in Skyward Sword. It actually seems very reminiscent of the Temple of Time from Twilight Princess. I won't spoil anything more than that, but it seems a lot like it. I'm wondering if maybe this is the Temple of Time, possibly. So that's very interesting. I love the music in here too. It's very peaceful and it just kind of feels like you're on sacred ground or something. So you cannot actually progress in this room without getting this chest because th once you get this chest it opens the door. So let's go ahead and get the dungeon map. And this is actually very important. You'll see on this map that a lot of the doors lead to nothing. And this is why you need the map. The map is very important in this area. Well, uh, I'll explain that in a second. For now, Fee will explain something that she has information to report. I've detected three sources of sacred power within this building. This power clearly radiates from the Triforce. I've triangulated the three sources of power and marked them on your map. Okay, so... The Triforce is not just at the end of this dungeon. We will be getting it in three pieces. Triforce, Wisdom, uh, the Courage, Wisdom, and Power. So we're going to be getting three pieces separately instead of one big shebang at the end. And one thing I like about this dungeon is that it tests those three attributes. Courage, Wisdom, and Power. Through battling enemies, solving puzzles, and just having the courage to press on. So, I really like that. Now, there are no... Now, this control panel, you can see those lines right right here correspond to the doorways. And you can move them around. This is, I believe, the only dungeon in all of Zelda where you can actually move the rooms around, which is really, really clever. I really like that. So, let's go ahead and move this room over here because that's pretty much the only one we can move over there. And you can see that there are these X's. Uh, there would, we're on top of one of the X's now, and that means that uh, the X, all of the X's on this map are the control panels where you can move the rooms around from them. Now you can also see that this room is grayed out. That's because this is the room that we are in, and apparently we cannot move rooms that we ourselves are in. So that adds a layer of 
of complexity? Yeah, complexity to these puzzles. This whole dungeon is a puzzle in and of itself. And also inside the rooms are puzzles, so that's really, really cool. So now that I have created the passageway for us to get to another control panel, let's go ahead and move, move stuff around. I think that I like this, okay. So let's go ahead and exit, and that will apply the changes we've made to the area. Master, I have new information for you. Analysis indicates that the shaking you felt just now was caused by a change in the building's structure. Now that the building structure has been altered, it appears you can enter the adjacent room. Okay. I propose you use this control panel to move through the structure and collect the components of the Triforce. Okay. So, because now we can go through this door without falling to our deaths, the gate will open. And that will lead us into the first room that actually has to be, you know, there's progression in the room. You know, it's not just the entrance. So, all of these rooms are kind of remixes of older temples. Temples we've viewed, that we've gone through previously. This one, obviously, because of the mushrooms, is a remix of the Skyview Temple. But also, they have, they have mechanics that are reminiscent of other dungeons in this. So, as you can see over there, there are some bars, and we cannot go through those, so we're going to have to go this way. I'm stabbing. Link, stab. Okay, just a second. Okay, there we go. Link got confused for a moment. Now, here is where the remix kind of... the whole remix part of the... the remix... thing <laughs> comes into play. I'm sorry if, if my ex explanation is a little bit long, or not very organized. I'm just trying to make sure that I mention everything that you'd need to get through this dungeon. So, as you can see, we're going to be swinging with our whip in this area. Now, we did not do that in Skyview Temple, so these have... they're basically dungeon pluses. Now, they aren't the length of entire dungeons, and actually this entire thing is a little bit short. All of the rooms together are a little bit short, but... They're very compact. There's a lot of stuff to do in these, and it can get a little bit, um, a little bit complicated. This room, you won't be really seeing that. You will see a little bit of complexity, but not much in this room. Some of the some of the rooms in this area get really complex and convoluted. So, if you need help, just look at this because I consider this what I'm doing now to be. The most walkthrough-ish part that you've seen so far of PAL plays. So, without further ado, if we just claw shot onto this pillar, we can just go all the way around. And by doing this, then we can claw shot onto the other pillar. And we're doing all this to get behind that barred gate. And I'm going this way, okay. So let's go ahead and claw shot on this. And then as soon as you're on this, you want to claw shot onto the fish and jump down. Now, if you swing on that rope, those enemies over there will blast you off with their fire. So what you want to do is grab the tough beetle and bomb them. You want to avoid their fire. I probably should have scooted back, but if you get if you get the middle one, it'll kill them all, but I think I missed. Did I miss? I think I missed, so I'll grab the bomb again. Okay, turn around. Oh, no, I think I, I think that I got them all, just in case I'll fly this in here. If you kill the middle one with a bomb, it will immediately co kill all three, so you don't have to do this separately or use your arrows, so that's really neat. So that allows us to jump onto this rope, and then we'll swing across. We could probably, if we, pra if we tried enough times, get inside those holes, but there's nothing in there for us, so I'm not going to do that. Now, we have to make use of our gust bellows which we got in the Lanaver region, and swing across. Okay. There we go, and... But you can... There we go, barely made it. Now, by doing this, let's go ahead and open that. Now, you're probably wondering if, if this is like other dungeons, you're probably thinking, why do we need a access here? You know, normally when you're done with the room, you don't need to return, right? No. 
because the all uh, the, uh, because this room or this dungeon is dynamic and that is you can move all of these around sometimes you may need a room uh you may need a room with a door on the left and a door on the top to be, be able to access say this room which has a door on the bottom so you could connect these so you would want an easy way to pass through instead of simply backtracking all through here so by opening this gate now we can just pass through here in case we need this room to access something new so that's why i you open the gate here also if you're low on anything there is a goddess wall right here so you can restock on hearts or fairies or arrows or bombs so you're, you're probably not going to want rupees because this late in the game you don't need to pay for anything so yeah and also i don't I did not mention it before I went into this temple, because I accidentally just walked in, but my inventory looks like this. I did switch it up a little bit. Uh, I now have a Guardian Potion Plus, a Heart Potion Plus Plus, which will allow us to heal ourselves completely twice, and a Potion Medal, so that we can have 9 minutes of invincibility in a pinch. Also, I have the two Life Medals, because I really like those in this playthrough. So, yeah, and also the Extended Carrying Capacity and the Shield. I will be wearing the Hylian Shield for the remainder of the game, in case you're wondering. So, without further ado, let's go through this door. Okay, we just walked straight from the Farron region, basically, to the Laneru region. Now, these aren't portals, and these are not- these rooms are not identical to other ones by any means. So... This is not basically me showing the same exact old stuff. All of these rooms have elements and mechanics of their respective dungeons or areas that they're that they are reminiscent of. So this one, because it's Laneru, it's very reminiscent of the Pirate Stronghold. Because of that, we have to deal with time shift orbs. And so we have to carry this all the way through the dungeon. And also we have to deal with Technoblins. And they're lightning fast reflexes, which I hate. Uh. Oh, come on. There we go. Sheesh. I still hate those guys, even with the true master sword, which allows me to kill them in two hits. They're still extremely annoying. Okay. Get the treasure there, which we don't really need, but I'll grab it anyway. And now we can progress through this this door. Now, we're going to have to deal with a... Oh, what are these called? They're called Centrobes, I remember now. Okay, Centrobe. We have to deal with one of these. And yes, I know, Fee. Three, and... Okay, that's fine, I don't care. Are you gonna try and hit me? Okay, good. We're gonna hit him, hit that thing with our thing. <laughs> and kill its baby bombs with Skyward Strike, and kill this one, just a vertical attack, and Shield Bash! And he's dead, and he'll drop a Red Rupee. Now what we want to do is drop the Time Shift Orb right here, and climb this ladder. Now what we want to do is be able to get the Time Shift Orb into this little nook right here. So by climbing this ladder, we're actually able to do so, because at the top of the ladder is a switch. By hitting the switch, it'll open the way for us to go into that little nook. And inside the nook is a very cool mechanic, I guess you could say. It's a very cool thing in, that they just thought up. Conveyor belts. We didn't do this in Laneru when we were there last, because it wasn't actually a thing. I really like this, because if you throw the time shift orb onto this conveyor belt, it'll activate it as it moves along, and it will carry it to the top. Very, very neat. I wish that they had had that kind of mechanic when we were originally in the Laneru region. Now I'll just step on this button and it will spit out the orb and we can carry it along our way. So, what we have to do in this room is we have to get the time shift orb from here to the end. Now you're wondering why can't we just carry it through here? Because there is an eye switch over right over there that we need to be in the past state in order to hit it. So, if we move this from point A to point B, we can do that. There it is. And 
Uh, we don't want to step off that switch. We want to go back onto the switch. There. And now let's ferry this through. I don't really need the cutscene to tell me that it's shut, but that's fine. Okay, move this all the way to the left, and now we can hit that, that eye switch. Also, there is a Techno Blend down below, so I will be a jerk to him and end his game. Is he down below? Yes, he is. Hey, buddy. Bye. Shot, shot in the arm. That's truly the worst way to die. Okay, by hitting this switch, we can just move it to the end without having to get out our gust bellows. So that'll save you the time of stopping and starting to get out your new your other item. So, there's another conveyor belt. This one moves slower, but that's actually a good thing. Because as this moves, you want to kill these Vemos. And the other one, I will kill with my arrow. But as this moves along, we want to hit these eye switches. It doesn't matter what order that we hit them in, just as long as we activate them. There's that one, and the Vemos will activate, it's going to appear up here, there it is, and hit that, and now we can hit this switch with our whip, oopsie, and it will reverse the direction of the conveyor belt. Now we want this to go all the way back down to the other end so that we can hit that last eye switch, so we just have to wait. Waiting. Uh, let's grab our bow. And five, four, three, two, one, go. There we go. And that will open that door. We are now finished with this room because we can now access the control panel. And anything else? No. I'll go ahead and just reverse this switch just so we can get the time shift orb to the other side. It's not necessary, but I'm a little bit of a I'm a little bit OCD and I would feel better if that were at the end rather than the beginning. So, with our control panel, let's look at our map. Uh we can't put anything besides this room right here. So, in fact, I should have put something here. But okay, let me look at our map. We can't access this, I'm just going to tell you that right now, because we need the key to access that doorway. So, we can't do anything till we get a key, and the key is in this room right here. We're probably not going to be getting either this episode, in fact, I don't want to, because I don't want to leave stuff unfinished. So, instead, let's shoot for... let's shoot for this room. What I'm thinking is that we can move this over here and switch all this stuff around. Perfect. Um, okay. I want this at the bottom. So let me move this stuff up and move this to the bottom. And then I actually want this to be above it. There we go. And then I want to move this over here, that there, and this here. Now let's pause. Okay, there's a control panel here, and once we get to the control panel in the center, we can move everything around. Just have it revolve all of all around us, so I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, but just looking at how much time is left this episode, I'm thinking that by the time we get to here, or in fact to here possibly, the episode will be over. So we're probably not going to be able to get everything done that we want to this next episode. We're probably going to get the key here, and then... Um, put it into this lock next episode. So that's what I'm thinking. Okay. So I think that's good. Uh, let me pause one more time. Well, because we can move everything around us, let's just look at the order of things. I will cut to where I have everything where I want it to be. Then I could... Okay, I don't think I can do anything more with this, so let's just go ahead and exit. And it will apply it. Now, I will meet you at this door. I will be right there. Oh, but first, before I do, let me show you how you can easily get back to the beginning of this room. There are going to be switches like this in almost every single room that allow you to get from start to finish easily, so you don't have to go through the whole gauntlet again. So if you just jump onto this switch, that will allow you to get from point from 
the beginning door to the end door easily in case you just want to use this as a pass-through room to a uh, new area. So, I will meet you back by that door. Alright, let's go through the door and let's see what this place has in store for us. I think I know which area this is, and is it? Yes, it is! This is the Fire Sanctuary Room. Now, this room is one of those convoluted rooms like I said before. There is so much in this room that it's just not even funny. There's just a lot of content in here. There's every place in this area has some purpose. Well, except for this archway, but you know what I mean. Okay, so right here, this is the only way you can go. So I don't feel like it's a stretch for me to say you're supposed to go in here. If you turn to the right, the right is where you want to go, but you will see that it is blocked off. So instead, if you turn to the left, it will allow you to get into a new room, which has a bomb in it. Now let's go ahead and restock our bombs, and also, then pick up a bomb, pick up a bomb, and roll it through here, and that will allow us to get through. And also, we'll get a funny shot of Link's posterior, yes. So, now we will be able to go through this room, and here we are. Whoa! Forgot that guy was here. Get hit. Get him! Okay. Uh, I forgot that guy was here. He didn't do any damage, so it's not really that threatening. Now, this room, all it has in it is a diggable space place where you can go underground. And the only way you can go in this room for now is to the switch, and you want to hit that. And that will open the way to that cur uh, that dark Lizalfos out there. Now... If you remember, way back in the Fire Sanctuary, we had the first time this door mechanic, I think it was the first time, was introduced to us, um, we used it to open a door like this. However, if you'll remember, that also shut the way and I had to go back underground to hit the other switch. This is no different. This is the goal of where we want to go, but getting there is no small task. But for now, instead of ex just explaining it, I'll show you by killing this Lizalfos. There we go. And that's the worst way to die, truly. And what you want to do is throw a bomb in here. And while that's exploding, let me tell you what our goal is. Seek the gemstones that sleep behind each statue. If you strike them in order from lowest to highest, the door will open. So, there are three. There are three crystal switches. Now, just like the th the stone tablet said you don't want to hit them you want to uncover them first now the first time i was here it bowling this bomb down this alleyway was actually fairly hard because i was experimenting with different lengths now if you're playing along with me the perfect length is this just curve it to the right and that will give it momentum in order to reach the end on the first try now, you actually want to go down there, because that opens the path to another area. I'm going to switch to my claw shots first. So just run down here, and jump in, and you can claw shot up these vines. Now, you need to go up these vines in order to gain access to the last crystal switch. And actually, what I did originally is, I believe what I did was I tried to shoot, it's very shaky, shoot the bomb. Now that does work. That works perfectly. However, if you don't want to use up arrows, a better way to do it is just to use your Skyward Strike, and it'll reach all the way over there, and you can clear it very easily. Now I'm going to hit those last two trees. There we go. And then we can use our beetle to grab, the, grab that bomb and drop it into the statue. And that will open up the way to the last crystal switch. Now, if you remember, the stone tablet said that we need to hit the crystal switches in order from lowest to highest. So, lowest is... Well, it's not over here, but this is where you want to go. Go ahead and jump over here. Then you can reach two of the switches with arrows or sword, and the last one with your beetle. Now, for this one, you want to hit this one because it's the lowest. Now, I gotta say, when we hit, when we had to roll the bomb down this alleyway, that would have been a very good minigame for them to do. I really wish they had done this as a minigame, like have a bunch of these curved slopes and stuff 
and like it's a bowling alley, I would rather have that than the digging minigame. If I wonder if anyone who's modded Skyward Sword has ever made such a minigame. That'd be really neat. Okay, so back to what we're doing. We're hitting this, the crystal switches from lowest to highest. This one's next. And the last one is over at the end. Now, there is no timer to these switches. In order to reset them, you just have to hit all of them, and then they will all reset. But if you hit them in the right order, I believe they will stay hit, and the, they will also open that gate. And yes, they'll stay hit. Okay, let's go ahead and open... Okay, there we go. Get some bombs back. And then, okay, this room, all it has in it is a diggable portion that will lead us into the original crawl space that we were in a few minutes ago, where we first activated the gate. Now, and you're probably guessing correctly, this is how we switched the gate to the other side. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit this bomb over here, which will allow us to hit the switch the gate back and forth, because now we can access that new area. And let me turn around here. And then to get to progress, to hit the blue side of that switch, you just have to hit the bomb this way, to the left, and then run around down and left, and you can hit it up. And there you go. And can I hit again? Yes, I can. That wasn't necessary, but I was just having fun. And now we can crawl right, and we can move the gate to shut it and open the way to the the goal. Now, I have to I have to ask, who put these crates in here and what are they for? Because it looks like that they're just basically square rocks or cube rocks that are just framed with metal. Are those for support or is there actually something inside? I wonder. Okay. Now we can go around here and turn uh, right, I got a little bit discombobulated. Now inside these skulls are all pe uh, all hearts, so if you need some heartage, there's heartage in here. And that will le lead us to yet another crawl space that will lock behind us. And th in this one, we have to fight Moldorms. That's we have to fight two at once. However, they cannot cross into their each other's paths. So what I like to do. And because they can't cross into each other's paths, they actually cannot get in here, which I really, really like. So if you bounce between Moldorm fights, you can actually do stuff really, really easily. So like this, I can just come around here and hit this guy because I was in the safe area. And just like that, if I go in this crawl space again, I can gain access to this guy's weak spot without him even knowing I exist. So that's really neat. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around because he's going past by me again, hopefully. There he goes. He cannot touch me. And I can hit him a third time. Or a second time. Okay, there he is. And now we can follow this guy and kill him. Now let's bounce back to the other fight. Now, notice we have not gotten hit at all yet. And this guy just committed suicide, basically, by running into that wall. And it's really easy. If you just bounce between fights instead of focusing on one at a time, you can get it done like like clockwork. So, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and crawl up. And there we go. Now we, we have access to this panel, but we don't want to move... I don't want to move anything, because I think we're good. Actually... Huh. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay, we're going to get one piece of the Triforce this episode. I know it's going a little bit long, but it is Saturday. So we're going to shoot for the Triforce of Power this episode, because we only have to clear one room. Oh, wait, no, we have to clear two, so it doesn't even matter. Okay, so I'm actually going to... Yeah, okay, we're already... We've already done a lot this episode and we're going on 30 minutes so i'm actually going to end it here and next episode we will get that key and we'll get two triforce pieces next episode because we've cleared oh about half of this temple so yeah thank you so much for watching and next time we will get two more pieces of the triforce and yeah we're almost done with this area
we're halfway done. Really nice. Okay, I release Skyward Sword episodes uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays, like today, unless I lost track of the days again, are long episodes. And I release Pikmin, because Pikmin is my other LP. Uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. There are no long episodes. They're just a day at a time, and it's actually going down like clockwork. It's really far into the LP right now. You guys should check it out. It's very exciting. There's excitement every single episode. And also, cool thing about this channel now, I release a new video game episode almost every single day. Well, every, every day of the week except Sunday. So, yeah, you can get constant fun. So... That, with my outro out of the way, I will see you next time for another Pal Play Skyward Sword.